Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so today we are bringing you the best ways to improve your photo and video quality on the Galaxy S23 series. Now, I'm gonna be using specifically the Ultra, which might have a few differences, but for overall, this will be the same, and overall, these tips are going to improve your quality dramatically. So first off, let's get started with the basics, and that is if you double press the camera button, it will launch your camera. You can do this from the lock screen, from when your phone is off, you just double press it and bam, it automatically will launch your camera. So that's the first thing you want to know. Second thing is going to be when you get up close to an object, it will ask you if you want this little yellow icon come up, which is basically going to the ultra wide camera or going to the main camera. Essentially, I turn this feature off if you want natural bokeh effect, which means a depth of field where it is going to be focused on the front and the background will be blurred so that the background is going to be blurred out as compared to what's right in front of you. So I like that better instead of this, which will keep everything in focus. So overall, this one is going to be the better way to go for most of your photos. Third thing, quickly and easily improve any photo and video quality by simply tapping and then either increasing or decreasing this little sun right there. What this is going to do is not only keep your focus good, but it's going to understand how you want the lighting to be. Most phones, including Samsung, overexpose. So I typically go a little bit down and then I'm able to take it compared to just taking a regular photo. So this one is the regular standard shot and this one is the way better looking shot with just a little bit dimmer. Again, almost every phone does this, but if you just do this little switch, you will get a much better image every time. Almost every phone overexposes when they shouldn't. Next thing we're gonna go to is going to be in the settings. Now, in the settings, you can do a bunch of things. First thing is scene optimizer. This is going to allow you to not only scan documents, but also just optimize for whatever screen setting it is, whether it be dark mode, whether it be whatever kind of setting you want to have, it will optimize for it. Shot suggestion is gonna be what it kind of tends to do where, oh, you need to tilt the phone a little bit to keep it straight or anything you might need. That would be the gist of it. Scanning QR codes obviously is self-explanatory. If you want that on, leave it on. Then you're going to do swipe the shutter button. Now what this is, is swiping down on the shutter button will either go into burst mode or you can create a GIF. Very simple and easy, but something you are going to want to know. Watermark, leave it off. And then advanced setting. I would never turn this on unless you really want it. If you do want to get into pro mode, you can change that to raw and JPEG, which is what I recommend if you're doing pro modes, probably what you should do, but that is my suggestion. Now, this one is one that a lot of people don't always get right. If you want to be able to read text when you're taking a selfie, you do not want it saved as previewed because if you actually don't have that highlighted, it will actually have text legible in comparison to basically getting it reverse, which is how most selfies are taken on the internet, and it always looks pretty horrible. So that's gonna be your next suggestion for it. Then I do recommend auto frames per second. I am not uh, decided on this one. I will do a full review of the camera on this phone later, so subscribe to find out this one. But I would more than likely turn this feature off. Uh, what it does is if you have a higher frame rate, which is gonna be better for better looking video, we'll get to that in a second, it will adjust it to a lower frame rate for lower light settings because it might look better in its opinion. I, again, will be testing this out and let you know, uh, but for now, I would turn that off. Video stabilization, definitely leave on. And under video options, I would leave it like this. One, prioritize video quality, I think is gonna be a good way to go. You can prioritize saving space, but video quality is going to be the best way to go for your overall experience. Now, you can actually turn this off as well because this is going to be a different kind of file type. So if you tend to post a lot on social media, especially older platforms that don't support things yet, I would actually turn that off. Uh, certain formats are not supported yet on that kind of quality. But you can leave it on if you want to. I'm gonna be testing both out and I'll let you know the findings. HDR10 plus, uh, leave that off because unless you plan on editing, you do not want to have that on. 
video zoom in mic definitely leave that on and 360 audio you can try on it's just a different kind of sound quality but i usually take it off tracking autofocus this is going to be really good to have on if you tend to take photos of a lot of moving things like kids or pets but this does disable the feature i showed you earlier where if i basically tap something it will not have that little sun anymore come up and it will track that part of the video but it's not going to do it the right way for your uh, other conditions. So I personally wouldn't have this on unless specifically I'm taking a photo or video of my son who's running around and I wanna make sure I get him. But we'll talk about that later in Camera Assistant for shutter priority or quality priority. Then I would uh, have tags on for your locations. It makes it easier to find later. Finally, you get to volume keys voice command i turn on so i can say cheese smile or shoot to take a photo or capture is probably the best one floating shutter button is an old favorite i do recommend turning it on what this does is it has a floating shutter to make it easy to put somewhere i just usually put it in the corner where it's not going to really bother me but this will make it so if I want to reach over, it's a lot easier to take this shutter than to reach all the way down here. So this makes it a lot easier. Again, as stable as you can be to take photos is gonna be the best way to take them. So things like this, things like capture with voice command and anything else like a volume rocker, uh, pressing the button, this is going to save you from moving so much taking your photo and you're going to have better overall images that way. All right, and then we have settings to keep. Now, this is a really important part. I would definitely recommend keeping the selfie angle and the uh, portrait zoom always steady. If you happen to do things at a certain, th at a certain way, like a higher resolution, camera mode filters or steady shot then by all means uh, keep it in that way but i these are the two that i recommend everyone automatically turn on all right then we get to camera assistant now this is really an interesting feature that has changed dramatically from before so uh, if you don't have this by the way you might need to download a third party app from the samsung store which is on your phone the galaxy store and that app is called goodlock so this little one right here, this pink one, you're gonna to need to download that uh, if you don't have camera assistant built into it already, but on some uh, Galaxy phones, depending on your carrier, it will already be built in. But if not, you can go to GoodLock and download it from there. And uh, basically this allows you for more features than you would typically have. There's also lots of other things, so yeah have fun. But in Camera Assistant, we do want auto HDR and auto lens switching to be a thing. This is really good, especially for low light shots. Sometimes your zoom isn't going to be the best thing to do in low light, but having a much bigger 200 megapixel sensor is going to be making up for it with a wider aperture. Basically what that all tech means is that you are going to want to leave this on so you don't have to worry. Then picture softening. If you like to have effects on you and things like that, you can do this. And basically what this will do is over sharpen your images. I typically don't like that, but some people uh, will like it for the way it pops. Quick tap to shutter. Now what this does is it basically allows you to just tap anywhere on the screen and it will immediately take a photo. Again, I don't like that. Uh, I feel like you're gonna get too many blurry photos that way, but it's something you can do. And here is probably the biggest feature in this area and that is capture speed. So you can do multiple things. If I were me, and I'm not doing the first week of quality photos, I would definitely leave this under balance speed and quality. So your shutter speed is gonna be pretty good and then your quality is gonna be good as well. For the first week, I plan on doing prioritized quality just to get the best overall image quality in these photos and to see what the camera can really do. But I do have kids. So if you do have kids or pets, I feel like you're gonna wanna make sure you don't miss shots and balance speed and quality. I think that's gonna be much better. If you are a person that, hey, I always need to take photos really quickly and that's the main thing, then prioritize speed. But this is something that Samsung allows you to do, 
Balance is gonna be the best for most people. For this first week, I'm gonna shoot quality and then I'm going to switch to balance and speed. Same way for higher resolution. This is only if you're going to be shooting a uh, higher resolution quality images. So don't worry about it if you're just shooting the normal, which we'll get to explaining that in a second. Do you wanna shoot multiple photos? Well, besides the timer in the settings of the camera app, which we'll get to in a second, you can do it right here. You can check how many images you're gonna take. So three, five, or seven, and how far between them. This is really good if you tend to take a lot of group shots and you want to do it with a timer this will make it so it's very nice and easy to do multiple shots right away dim screen while recording this is going to be good especially if you're in a low light area when filming video this will basically make it so that after filming a minute you have no input it will automatically dim your screen to save you battery life again very good for that reason Clean preview on an HDMI display. Show the camera preview without settings or anything. This is really good if you hook up to an HDMI externally. I would personally want this unless you want your settings to be seen on your TV or monitor that you're showing it on. All right, now we're gonna go over the rest of the camera settings and then we're gonna get to video quality. So first and foremost, you do have a couple of options right here. First thing you can do filters and when you shoot a face, you can have it so that it is smoothness on. Take years off yourself by smoothing it very well and also getting rid of wrinkles, acne, and stubble if you haven't shaved. Tone, this will change the tone of color depending on what you kind of want your skin tone or overall tone of the shot to be. Then you have jawline. Lose inches off uh, those chubby cheeks and basically make them disappear. And then changing your eyes to big. If you had a long night the night before and you need to make your eyes wider because you can't just open them enough, hey, there you go. All right, then we get to motion photo. This is really good to leave on if you have kids or pets again. Something of a shot when people are moving really quickly and you can go back in time and pick a better photo. I would always leave it on. Then right here, you're gonna have the regular uh, picture taking. 16 by nine is something that I use all the time uh, for thumbnails, so I usually switch to that when I wanna shoot a thumbnail. One by one is obviously gonna be squared image, and then you also have three by four and three by four for 50 megapixels and 200 megapixels. This is only if you're really shooting a landscape where you want a lot of detail to come in and you can stand still, then you're gonna want to go to 200. 50 is kind of the medium if like you do want to make sure that it's a high resolution quality, but just know again that you are going to have to stand still longer when taking those images. Then you have the timer that we previously talked about and you can choose here how many seconds delay you have. Flash, you should absolutely never turn on, always leave that off. Then we get to some of the other settings. So first, our zoom. One, you can go like this to zoom in like just like that if you want. So you have that ability. But the more than likely one you have is the ones right here. So you have one X, 0.6, which is wide, three, which is a little bit zoomed in, and then 10, which is really zoomed in. You see, I just changed the camera because it wasn't giving me a good photo. So it literally changed the camera by default because that's what we did in camera assistant. So just so you know, that is what will happen if you use those settings. I would never go past 30, by the way. So 30, you're pretty much at that point uh, going to have a good clear shot, but after that, you're not gonna go further. So I wouldn't go all the way to 100 or 50 or anything like that. 30 is pretty much the most you can go and it's gonna look better than any other smartphone on the market if you have the Ultra. Then we go to more settings. So a couple you should know about. Uh, one, Expert RAW, if you are planning on shooting high-end photo, that's gonna be different from Pro. RAW will give you even more abilities to shoot that way. Pro video is really good, and we'll go over that in our video section. Then we have night mode, pretty self-explanatory. At night, you can go to this if you know you want to brighten the shot and you don't want to rely on the automatic night mode. Food, this is so good. It makes food pop and just looks so amazing. I will show you some food shots that look absolutely amazing, and it just really makes everything look great. Panorama, I would just use when you want to. 
In terms of slow motion, always go for slow motion instead of super slow motion. Super slow motion is slower, but it is much, much res lower resolution and doesn't look as good. Slow motion is gonna be your better bet. Portrait video is pretty cool. You can do some cool blurring effects uh, for the video and we'll get more into that in the video section. And then single take I've never liked and director view is gonna be really good again for video. So that's gonna be it for the most part. Portrait, obviously, you can go to, depending on which lens you wanna to move to, to the ultra wide or to the regular one for that blur effect. You can choose which way and then you can make different ones. I would usually do a subtle blur for a portrait, like a three, and that will look much, much better than your over blurred shot, just because you have a natural bokeh effect, so, I honestly would just do the shot that I was talking about earlier, where you can pick something up, put it in front, and it will look much better and blurring that background than a portrait mode would. And now we get into the video. So the first thing I'll go over is super steady, which is just that hand shaking one. If you want really steady shots, you can switch over to this one. It does use the ultra wide, so it's not gonna be as good unless you're in a bright day setting. I wouldn't even use it in studio lighting because studio lighting's a bit different. So for me, I would recommend this on a day when you're out, you're watching your kids play football or something like that, and you want a steady shot, that's gonna be great for that purpose. Uh, you can also still change the resolution, so I would probably go 60 frames per second so you get a better overall image, uh, but that would be me uh, for that scenario. All right, then I wanna let you know that you can also change the regular frames per second. Now, which one is the best quality? I mean, you have full HD, you have UHD or 4K, and then you have 8K. So which one would I recommend? I would recommend the full HD at 60 or the Ultra HD at 60. Now, the reason for this is because Ultra HD at 60 is the frame rate that I actually plan on shooting my new videos on and currently I am filming at full HD and what that means is that everything looks really uh, just lifelike, your movement just looks popping and it really looks good. Your videos will stand out with this higher frame rate, especially if you upload on platforms that support it, which most do nowadays. So 4K at 60 is where I would recommend most people use for standard video recording. And we do have another frame rate that I'll go over in a bit. All right, I just wanna remind you that again, you can tap it and lower it right before a video and you will have a better quality video then than you would have if you just tapped it and you could see it just brightened up a little bit more than it probably needed to. So just tapping it and then lowering a little bit can go a long way in giving you a much better video quality. Then we go to the more section. So pro video is going to be really good if you are using an external mic. So you can tap this button right here and you can use front mic, rear mic, so it detects what it wants to pick up. If you are vlogging, for instance, and you are behind the camera, then you're gonna to want to use the front microphone. Or if you are vlogging and you're using the rear cameras, then you're gonna to wanna to use rear. But you can also use Bluetooth here. So you can use a Bluetooth mic and you will sound amazing even from a distance. And overall, just better quality. Uh, Bluetooth mic is most likely gonna sound better if you have a good mic quality. All right, and then I want to direct you again to the frame rates here. Now on this one, you have a little bit more because this is pro mode. You do have a little bit more. So another one that I would recommend is UHD at 24 frames per second. Now 24 is a very cinematic looking. Most movies are still filmed at 24 frames per second. So it's very cinematic looking. It's another one I would definitely recommend to shoot on this phone to be different. Uh, the last one that I would recommend though is the 120 Full HD. Now this is going to be very, very uh, lifelike, very uh, so much so that you will be amazed how it looks, but also it's gonna be amazing for slow motion shots. You are capturing a very high quality at a really good resolution and at a really good frame rate to slow it down if you ever want to and be able to, in editing, capture amazing slow motion. All right, then I also want to let you guys know about portrait video. Again, this is that blurring effect that you can put. So if you have something here, it will get a blurring effect uh, unnaturally 
on there so it'll have a nice uh, blur effect ready to blur out everything in the background. But if you do a regular video, I think it looks a lot better. So if you're at a distance, then go for portrait video. But if you're not, then you don't need it because this natural bokeh is gonna be amazing. Also, FHD or UHD, so you can uh, upgrade the resolution, but you cannot upgrade the frame rate on portrait video. So just know that going in. And then finally, director's view. I absolutely love this. This does both the front camera and the rear camera. So you can choose which camera you want to shoot on. So this would be your main camera, which is gonna be the best quality. This is gonna be the ultra wide, and this one is going to be the zoom in. But you also have the front selfie on which is awesome so you can decide how you want it whether you want it split floating or single view so if you just want to switch between the cameras very seamlessly you can do that but front and rear camera is awesome for vlogging gives you a full a great experience that you can have and you can really play around with a lot so i really love that you can also click the button here at the top and it will save it separately or together as previewed. So save video as previewed, that's one file, or saving it this way, saves both the front and the rear separately, so you can kind of put it together how you want later. I really like this option, but I would pretty much do it to save video as captured for my needs. And then you can swipe down to reverse it. So swipe up or down to reverse, which is the main camera and which is the rear camera, depending on what you want to show off more. All right, and then speaking of that, to switch between your regular camera and your selfie, you do just swipe up and down, and hey, there I am. So very simple and easy to do. Uh, the only thing I wanna let you know about on selfie is by default, this button right here is actually changed to having the face on. So by default, it adds a little bit smoothness. If you don't like the way that looks, turn it off and you'll get more detailed shot if you're okay with that. Then you also have color tone, whether it be normal or warm, depending on how you like. For me and my family, I typically leave it on natural. If I just took photos of me, I might like a little bit more warm, but it just really depends on how many people in your family are of the same skin tone as you or different and how you like them to come out. All right, guys, this is going to help you take much, much better photos and videos, but make sure to stay subscribed to my channel because I will show you all the cool things you can do with photo editing and video editing on this phone at a later date. Let me know what you guys think of this video. If you did to find it helpful, please give a like, thumbs up down below. Thank you as always so much for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Thank you so much again for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Also, follow me on social media at YouTube tech guy. And check out some more great tech videos on your screen right now.